Hello and welcome to the Student Life at Chicago Kent webinar. I'm Nicole Vilches, Assistant Dean for Admissions, and I'll be the moderator for today's program. We're joined today by a panel of current Chicago Kent students who will tell you more about their experiences at Chicago Kent. After that, we'll open the floor for your questions. Our panelists today are Anisha Arnold. Anisha is a 4L evening student. After graduating with a degree in communication from the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign, she took time off to be with her son and work. Since being at Chicago Kent, Anisha has been a member of the Black Law Student Association, the trial team, and has been the teaching assistant for the Chicago Kent Pre-Law Undergraduate Scholars, or PLUS program, for the last two summers. She recently achieved one of her biggest accomplishments in law school when her team won first place in the Midwest Balsa Trial Competition, third place at Nationals, and in each competition, Anisha earned an award for Best Advocate. Gabriel Lara. Gabriel is a 3L, obtaining the JD Certificate in Financial Markets Compliance, as well as the JD Certificate in Business Law. He graduated from Tufts University in 2015 with a bachelor's degree in clinical psychology. At Chicago Kent, Gabriel serves as the president of the Hispanic Latino Law Student Association, president of the Student Humanitarian Network, as well as a member of the Student Alumni Board and ad hoc member of the Student Bar Association Finance Committee. Gabriel will be completing his JD in May and is excited to be joining Chapman and Cutler as an associate in their Chicago office after passing the bar. Clara Lilac. Clara is a 3L student also graduating in May. Claire earned her Bachelor's of Arts from the University of Michigan, double majoring in Women's Studies in Spanish. At Chicago Kent, Claire is captain on the National Trial Advocacy Team, a Notes and Comments Editor on the Chicago Kent Law Review, and a representative of the Student Bar Association, and on the executive boards of the Women in Law Society, Kent Justice Foundation, and the Bankruptcy, Insolvency, and Restructuring Association. After graduation, she'll be joining Skadden Arts, Late Meager and Flom as an associate in the Chicago office. And Zach Washnikowski. Zach is currently a 3L at Chicago Kent. With a background in physics from the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire, he plans on practicing intellectual property law after graduation. Zach is actively involved in several Chicago Kent student organizations, and he's currently serving as the president of Intellectual Property Law Society and as a notes and comments editor with the Chicago Kent Law Review. And with that, I'd like to turn things over to our panelists, and we will begin with Anisha. Hi, everyone. My name is Anisha, um, and I'm happy to be with you guys today. I'm sorry for my lighting, but um, just to add on to everything she says, I am a 4L evening student, and I believe I'm the only evening student on this panel, so I welcome all questions from all uh, the future evening students. Um, my experience at Chicago Kent has been a wonderful experience, so I'm happy to uh, share all of it with you guys. Um, and then the one thing I will add that wasn't in my bio is that I um, am earning a public interest certificate from the school, so if anyone has any questions regarding uh, certificates or that one specifically, um, I'm more than happy to, to talk about that. Did you want me to say any, uh, anything additional here? <laughs> um, maybe talk a little bit about like, what you've enjoyed about your experience at Chicago, Kent. Yes, absolutely. Um, so the one thing that stands out to me about Chicago Kent, and I did go to U of I, which of course is a huge campus, um, but it, to this day, I still didn't feel like it was the right place for me. Uh, my favorite thing about Chicago Kent is that um, there's not really um, an easier way of finding your niche, but everyone is just kind of there to help. Um, you have professors, you have judges, um, people from admissions, just people who are constantly there willing to help you. Um, when I got to Chicago Kent, I had no idea what I wanted to um, pursue in law. I was thinking immigration, but coming out, um, I've experienced so many different things through the clinics they've offered, um, through the trial team especially. Um, the, my current job as a law clerk, I, um, I earned because um, the attorney there coached one of the trial teams that I was on. Um, so just the opportunities that Chicago Kent really opens um, opens up. They they just really care about their students, and they just they always seem to be available. And that's what my favorite thing is about Chicago Kent. Great. And we'll turn things over to Gabriel. 
Hi, good morning, everyone, uh, and thanks for joining us on a Saturday morning. Um, uh, like the like the bio states, my name is Gabriel. I'm a 3L at Chicago Kent. Um, a little bit about me: I was uh, raised in the West Lawn neighborhood in Chicago, uh, which is in the south side of Chicago, close to Midway Airport. For any locals, um, I went off to college in the East Coast, uh, and after college, I spent two years working as uh, an analyst information governance for a large firm. Um, it took me two years. I, I took some time off specifically to make sure that law school was the right decision for me, uh, not just to make sure that it was a, an investment, a, a financial investment that I was uh, in position to make, but also uh, an investment in effort and time. Uh, so I did take two years off um, and I found that incredibly helpful. So if there's anyone that has taken time off, I'm also available to definitely speak to that and how to really maximize on that time off and how to get back into the swing of things as soon as you start law school. Uh, I think one of the things that I enjoyed the most about Chicago Kent is definitely the people. Uh, similar to what Anisha said, uh, one of the things that I've really found helpful has been all of the uh, networking opportunities that the school has provided. Uh, not just internally with your peers, uh, with upperclassmen, um, but also with, with the alumni and the professors. Um, I know that right off the bat when I started, I think within the first week, um, I had met uh, a number of two and three L's that were willing to really take me under their wing and show me the ropes of how to navigate certain things in law school. And that's one of the things that I found most helpful um, at Kent. And this was something that happened almost organically. So the people are really incredible and they provide uh, incredible support and opportunities. Thanks, and um, we'll now turn things over to Claire. Hi, everybody. My name is Claire. Good morning. Uh, so I graduated from the University of Michigan in 2014 and uh, spent about three years trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I had no idea that I was going to end up in law school. I initially lived in Peru for a year, worked for a nonprofit, came back to Detroit, Michigan, where I'm originally from, worked in finance, worked at another nonprofit, and throughout all those trials, I realized that I wanted to go to law school and try to really develop uh, certain analytical skills that I already had and really enjoyed using, and then use that for a greater purpose. And I decided to come to Chicago Kent because one, I was initially really interested in trial advocacy and noticed that they not only had an amazing trial advocacy program, but they had a really great trial advocacy team where they go across the nation and compete against other schools in mock trial competitions. I was interested in that. I also wanted to live in Chicago and I uh, started to notice that there was a really strong alumni uh, base in Chicago that would help out alumni from Chicago Kent. All of those things came to be true. So that's why I chose Chicago Kent. And while I've been here, uh, I've been very active in a lot of student organizations, as Nicole mentioned in my bio, uh, joined Law Review, and then I also uh, ended up joining uh, our national trial advocacy team, which has been an amazing experience. And uh, one of the things that I love so much about Chicago Kent, as Gabe and Anisha already touched on, is we have a really strong community. Not only are the students wonderful, you'll make uh, really great, long-lasting friendships and relationships that will carry on throughout your legal career, but also the professors are so invested in each and every one of the students, not only in your core curriculum, but also in any additional classes uh, that you might take as you explore what you wanna do in the law, because the law is so varied in all the experiences that you can get. And uh, Chicago Kent provides really strong mentorship because the professors care about the students. And as Gabe mentioned, older students care about younger students. And that feeling doesn't end when you graduate. That goes into a really strong alumni network. So there's a lot of opportunities I've been able to get because we have such a strong alumni base who are always willing to help uh, Chicago Kent students and fellow alumni. And then another thing that I really loved about Chicago Kent is within school, there is so many 
opportunities for practical experiences in the classroom, gaining skills in the classroom that will help you in real life, but then also being able to be exposed to external experiences like judicial externships or legal externships or clinic work that prepares you for what it will be like when you graduate and you enter the legal field. So that's a little bit about me and a little bit about what I love about Chicago Kent. Thanks, and um, Zach. All right, um, hi everybody. Um, so maybe just a little bit more about me uh, than what was in the slides. Um, so yeah, I went to um, the school in northern, northern Wisconsin where I studied physics. Um, and after a couple of years, I realized that, that it, it just wasn't for me. Um, just sitting in classrooms, doing all these theoretical things, um, like the professors are just deriving equations all class. Um, I realized that that wasn't for me. Um, and law school, I mean, part of why I wanted to do physics, it was part of the reasoning, it was part of the complex thinking. In law school, it, it has all of that. So I found what I was looking for, but in a way um, that was a lot more interesting to me. Um, I came to Chicago Kent um, for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, they have a really strong IP program. Um, intellectual property. Um, they have a certificate program in that, which I'm also getting. Um, and through my IP experience here, um, I guess even through my entire law school experience, um, I've realized, you know, I came in thinking I wanted to do one thing, but the community and the professors and the class offerings have really shown that I'm interested in a lot more than what I thought I would be interested in. Um, so Chicago Kent has really kind of broadened my interest in many aspects. Um, and unfortunately being at the end of the list, I have to echo everyone else's great sentiments, but really what is best about Chicago Kent is the community. Um, we have amazing professors who actually care about your learning. And in terms of the student body, not only like Claire said, will you make friends that will last um, beyond law school, um, we don't have a very competitive student body here. I mean, of course, everybody wants to do their best, but nobody is putting anybody else down. Everybody wants to succeed. Um, maybe just one extra thing to add. Um, I, some, something I wish I would have known prior to coming into law school um, was that law school, uh, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. Um, I had read several books, for example, um, One L of a Ride, um, you know, they, they kind of talk about like, you can read about it, but there's nothing quite like actually getting in there and, and being in law school. Um, but it is something you can adapt to. And once you figure out how law school actually runs, it's actually um, a pretty good experience. So. With that, that's my little introduction, um, a little bit about me. Um, I'll turn it back over to our admissions. Thanks. So what we'd like to do now is open the floor for your questions, and you can use the questions box in the webinar software to submit your questions. And while we're waiting for the first questions to come in, uh, maybe you could each talk a little bit more about you know, some of the factors that were important to you when looking at schools and how you made your decision and the decision that ultimately led you to Chicago, Kent. And I know Claire touched a little bit on this, but if you maybe each elaborate more on sort of your, your personal experience since our admitted students are, you know, trying to make this decision and they're doing it without being able to actually go and visit schools right now. Yes, so I guess I'll start um, if we're gonna go in order. Um, and I just want to add a few things because everyone else's um, addition to their bios told a little bit more about them. Um, so just real quickly, I want to say I took five years off from undergrad to uh, Chicago Kent. Um, I do have a son who's now nine um, and I'm also a first generation high school graduate, college graduate and grad student. So if any of that um, sparks any questions, I just wanted to add that to um, my spiel. Um, but one of the things um, that attracted me to Kent was their evening program. Um, being in school for so long, like your whole life, 
um, you know, I'm used to going throughout the day and I never really considered going to law school part time, even though I always planned to go to law school. Um, so when it finally came time for me to make that decision, um, it, it seemed like an easy decision. Just looking at the different schools, um, just not even the schools themselves, their websites, but just kind of looking at the the articles and um, all the the resources on different law schools, Chicago Kent um, at that time and at this time just really stood out. Um, they their admissions team is awesome. Um, there's always a student being shown around. Um, I don't know if Maricela is anywhere on this call, but um, she's always helping someone. She's always asking students if they can get involved. Um, so I would say the admissions team was really great at attracting me to Chicago Kent. Um, the fact that it's smack dab in the middle of Chicago, um, I think is great. It's easy to get there. I get on the Metro from the suburbs in 20 minutes. Um, and it's close to a lot of law firms and the courts themselves. Um, so everything from like clinics to, and Claire can say this, um, on the trial team, we practice at the Daily Center. Um, like these competitions get really serious and the environment around Kent um, really helps to um, enhance the experience that Kent itself um, provides. Yeah, I think um, I can echo a lot of that as well. Um, I initially uh, learned about Chicago Kent through a professor. Um, I was uh, I was at an event. Uh, funny enough, I was at an event while I was still working uh, at my firm. Uh, the firm was on Wacker Drive, which was only only about a ten minute walk from uh, from Chicago Kent uh, downtown campus. And uh, I met a professor at a at an event, and uh, the the fact that I wanted to go to law school came up. And he started talking to me about Chicago Kent. And uh, one of the things that I I always am uh, amazed by is the passion that people have when they talk about things that they're passionate about. Um, and this is something that was obvious to me when I met this professor. Um, so he he told me, "Come by the school. I will uh, show you around." And you know we will we'll talk about like what steps you need to take to submit an application if you're interested um, and that was my first impression of chicago kent it was a very positive first impression of someone that was extremely passionate and extremely driven to try to uh, tell me just about how great the school was uh, once i did show up to to kent i was uh, i was definitely taken back by everything that was available to the students uh, one of the most impressive things uh, was uh, the clinics that were available uh, simply the fact that as students were able to get so much experience without even having to sometimes leave the, the downtown campus is incredible. Uh, another thing that Anisha touched upon is the, uh, the geographic location. Uh, Chicago Kent is a 10 to 20 minute walk from all of the major, uh, from where all the major law firm locations in Chicago. Uh, the loop is very close. Uh, I know in the I've I've worked all three years of law school, um, and I've been able to do that because my commute to uh, to the office or from the office to Chicago Kent is ten to fifteen minutes. It, it makes it a lot easier. Um, overall, though, um, I I do find that my experience at Kent was an overall positive one. Like I said, the people were incredible. Uh, the resources provided by the school were also pretty pretty great. So just to piggyback off of that, a few things I looked at, actually, uh, when I started talking, when I started looking at different law schools, I started talking to people who I had interacted with uh, in different formats and started realizing they were lawyers. And uh, so one of my friends who was a little bit older than me, she was actually an alumni at Chicago Kent and put me in contact with Michelle Vodnik who is a career services, um, works in the career services office and has worked here for a very long time. And she put me in contact and was super helpful and has been helpful in my law school experience as well. But she put me in contact with other students. I told her what I was interested in, what I was looking at. She put me in contact with other students and those students uh, all called me and we were able to talk about what I was looking at, what I was concerned about. Uh, especially a big thing for me was I thought I wanted to live in Chicago, but I was living in Detroit at the time. So I 
a move was going to be involved. So I wanted to make sure if I made the move that Chicago was where I would want to stay. And I wanted to look at not only the resources that the school offered at that time, but how the school stayed involved in the, in the alumni's lives after that. Uh, so those were a few things that uh, I was looking at, not only just like the programs that were offered, even though um, there are a ton of really amazing programs offered. And as Anisha and Gabe mentioned, the clinics for those who are not familiar with what they are, because I wasn't familiar with what they are, because I had no idea anything about law school before I started looking into it, is are we, our clinic program, we have practicing lawyers who run their offices out of our school. So they meet with real live clients and our students get to work with those um, there with those lawyers and basically get to see the life of a case in different aspects. I know there is an environmental clinic, there is a tax clinic, there's a criminal law clinic, there is a mediation clinic. So, and I'm sure there's a lot of different other clinics as well. So there's a lot of options for things that you're interested in. You can get school credit while actually getting practical experience and learn what it's like to see clients. Uh, and so I, those were a lot of factors along with the trial advocacy program, which is a really big uh, pull for me that um, made Chicago Kent the most attractive option. All right, yeah, so I've already mentioned um, part of what drew me to Chicago Kent was the strong IP program, but I suppose my process of picking law schools was kind of convoluted. I think I had a, an Excel sheet that ranked schools by like you know eight different categories and in including like school rank and costs and probably other programs as well um but basically um what it came down to was um i wanted to choose the best school that was most cost effective for me um that i got into of course um so, and it, it came down to Chicago Kent and Loyola in Los Angeles, not, not the one in Chicago. Um, and, and, you know, I toured both schools. Um, and, well, being that I'm from Wisconsin, moving to LA seemed a little bit crazy. Um, Chicago Kent was a little bit cheaper of a decision, um, but, um, yeah what it came down to was really just being well making a move that is still within my comfort zone but not something so substantial um and cost um and as i you know as i was admitted and was, as i was trying to move to chicago um the school helped me with that um not not formally but there is uh, if you are looking to move to Chicago and you want roommates, there is a roommate board. Um, I found my roommate of two years on that board. Um, so the school provides many steps once you're admitted, once you're attending, to help you find people in a community um, to help you succeed. Great. Now, our first question is for Anisha, and it's, um, are, have you found that there are opportunities available to day students that you wished you could have taken advantage of as an evening student but weren't able to? And then also, um, how was your experience on the trial team? How did that compare to what um, would have been experienced by a day student? Uh, that's an amazing question because I think um, all the evening students are in agreement when we say that, um, well, I'll first start off by saying Kent offers a lot of different uh, events the organizations are always throwing something. If you visited the school, our entryway is always like hosting some type of event um, of judges, attorneys, uh, whatever you know is kind of going on. Um, taking evening classes, and when I say part time, um, I when I was when I applied to Kent, I was thinking part time being um, a cut amount of hours, not really realizing that all the classes would be evening classes. Um, and it kind of just reached a point where every time we're coming out of classes or heading to classes is when an event would kind of be um, ending or starting. Um, so as far as the the events that were thrown um, at Kent over the years, um, missed a couple of those. Um, but um, 
as we've all mentioned, the community is really great. So they're really great at recording things. Um, if you miss an organization and want to get in touch with, say, a guest speaker that was part of, I don't know, a business organization, you can go to the business organization. Um, and everyone's really great with linking you with other people. So yes, there is a challenge time-wise of making certain events. Um, in regards to being part of organizations, I will say, and Claire, correct me if I'm wrong, I think since I've been on the trial team, uh, which is, this is my third year, I may have been the only evening student. Um, and I declare am I, I don't know. Uh, the only, well, John Sinise also. Okay. Is, You're right. Yeah, and then um, there was, like Eric was before, but while we've been on team, I think it's just right. you and John. Um, so I will say it's it's not impossible, um, and it, it kind of all goes back to the community, just reaching out to people. And I've done trial in high school, um, took some time off in college, but when I came to Kent, it was just that that's my niche. Like that's you know adjusting to classes, as Zach said, like just adjusting to law school is really something. Um, so to find what you really, you know, when you find what you really want to do, whatever organization, whatever class really sparks your interest, it becomes an awesome thing. And that's what happened to me when I got back on the trial team. Um, and because it's something I wanted to do, I was just very open with my teammates, um, my, um, the judges, the coaches. Um, and it just always worked because trial team is, it's a really it's a group of people and then you're split once again into these individual teams for different competitions um and a perfect example doing this competition where we just advanced um because we advanced i wasn't able to compete on another competition that one of the judges wanted me to compete in um so sometimes things just come up but i will say that ken has been very great at um just adjusting to your schedule as long as you stay in tune with them so yes it's a challenge but if you want it the people are there to help you um, do it. Our next question is, uh, what do you all do to maintain a healthy work-life balance? This is huge, right? I think everybody is always very concerned about maintaining a really good balance. And I think the most important thing to remember is it is different for everybody because what works for me is not what's going to work for Zach. Uh, so just those two though. <laughs> um, and so that's what's really important is you just kind of have to know yourself and figure out like what works for you. What works for me and what I what I really recommend when you're coming in as a 1L, especially because I came from a working environment and I was working before I started law school, is treat law school like a work day. I used to get to Kent at 8 a.m. and I would stay till at least five or six. And that was a really good way for me to not only maintain a good schedule, but I would get there and I would study, I would do classes and I would study some more, I would work on everything. And then when I came home, I had my evenings to myself. So that, uh, as long as, I mean, eventually you start taking more classes and you start getting involved in more organizations. And so maybe you don't have the evenings to yourself as much anymore, but especially that first semester, I was very regimented uh actually all throughout the year i was very all throughout my years i've been very regimented about getting there early and staying there late but i allowed myself that first semester to have some evenings where i would go to the gym i would cook some meals uh and do those kinds of things talk to friends especially uh i commute on the blue line and so i would always make sure that i'd call my parents when i'm talking on the blue line that was a great way to stay connected um, while you're doing the commute for me, the big thing was making sure that I was treating school like a work day and uh, putting a certain amount of hours in consistently, but then also making sure that I was not neglecting eating the eating well and working out. Working out was is really big for me in general. I think it really helps with nerves and anxiety and it provides endorphins and again, a consistency in schedule. And so having, creating this habit for myself was a way for me to uh, maintain happiness even under the most stressful of times. Because even though I love law school, and I really did, I really love learning, uh, it can be stressful just because of everything you're going through. So I think maintaining a, a schedule that works for you was really helpful for me. Uh, yeah, I think uh, schedule for me is, is very important. Um, 
I've always been a bit of a planner. Um, I like to, I, I utilize uh, any resource I can to make myself uh, just try to keep up with everything that I have to keep up with. Uh, so that means for me, a lot of uh, Google, uh, Google Calendar uh, entries, a lot of to-do lists. Um, so my, my 1L year, um, I was working 10, 10 or so hours um, at the career services uh, office in, at Chicago Kent. And I was also volunteering with LAF Chicago. Um, so I didn't do that great of a job with uh, work-life balance right off the bat. Um, but I think that what uh, really kept me going, what kept me healthy uh, was some of the meditation that I was doing, some of the yoga that I was doing. Um, and I also came to to be okay with giving myself breaks. Um, one of the things that uh, I'm very I'm guilty of is definitely just feeling guilty when I don't have something to do. Um, and that's something that's that's gotten worse since I started law school because it is a, a very busy time of your life. Um, so I've, I've actually gotten myself to give myself breaks. Um, and sometimes that means I input in my Google calendar that between this hour and this hour, it's break time. Um, another thing that I did that I'm kind of uh, <laughs> slowly regretting a little, my two a year, <laughs> I got a cat. Uh, she's been great. Uh, she's uh, having a pet has really helped me. I live by myself. Um, just because I know that living by myself, it would be better for me to be able to succeed in law school because that's just how I work. But uh, after years, I, I ended up getting a cat uh, because I've always wanted a cat. Uh, currently, she's trying to hop on my desk and try to interrupt, but hopefully, you know, I can keep her distracted while, while, while talking. Um, but ultimately, it's really knowing what works for you. Uh, for me, being regimented and being able to schedule time to take care of myself uh, was important. Um, so I made sure that it, it made its way into my Google Calendar, just like any other class and just like work. Uh, maybe uh, just add a little bit more on to all of that. So Claire and Gabe, they it seems like you guys have a very regimented approach. And to me, being regimented only really came to play at the end of the semester or when there was a paper due in the next week or so. Um, but for most of the rest of the time, um, I always tried to stay busy and I, you know, I found it was okay if I took you know, like an hour to you know, watch something and eat dinner. Um, but to me, um, staying on top of um, everything going on, it was really all about minimizing stress. Um, and it took some time to actually find that balance. Um, for example, first semester, um, you know, everything was very new. Um, I ran track and field in college and I was still trying to run. And there came a time where um, even during my running, I was like, you know, my, I feel stressed. Um, so just I had to put that aside um, until I could figure out how to succeed in law school. And now I figured that out and I'm back to running 50 miles a week. So once you can find a way to manage the stress and everything going on, um, you can find a way to succeed. So I won't be too long, but I'm the complete opposite. <laughs> Going into law school, I I was the procrastinator. I was, um, I'm not a very, I don't stress out easily, but I do get anxious. I get uh, not overwhelmed, but I have a lot on my plate um, just as an evening student. Um, when I started, my son was five. Um, so imagine that age. Um, he was transitioning from, from preschool to um, public school, kindergarten. Um, I had lost my job and I was also transitioning into real estate. Um, and then I also just didn't have any real experience with kind of the, just any law lingo. Um, so just my transition into the law school and professors speaking and I'm just like, I don't even know what that is. Um, while the other student next to me who's been working in a law firm for the last three years is having an in-depth conversation with the professor and I'm just like, stop <laughs> slow down so for me um especially my first year it was very stressful um and i think that stress came came with just not knowing enough um at that time um 
being a part of the evening division, there are a lot of people around you, uh, despite the different levels you are in your, you know, your, your, your knowledge of the law. Um, everyone's kind of understanding of the fact that you guys are evening students for a reason. Um, so I would say just interacting with the people that, you know, kind of have similarities like you, you know, taking the time to go to lunch with those people and talk with those people. Um, but I would say if there's anything you can do beforehand, I would just prepare yourself for law school. Talk to someone. You guys are doing a great job speaking with us, but um, really kind of learn what your day to day would be like. And like your first week after you experience that, um, kind of adapt to that, know what you need to do. For me, I started working out. I was, I was workout crazy when I started law school. Um, and in the last year I gained 20 to 25 pounds and I can't remember the last time I worked out. So like I said, I'm the complete opposite of everyone else. Um, but I do agree with everyone in regards to self care, Zach, especially in regards to just taking the time off when you know you need the time off. Like no one knows you better than you. No one knows when you need a break better than you. Um, and no one knows your body better than you. Um, so long story short, just kind of listen to yourself and take the time to create a plan, which I unfortunately think I never really did. I just kind of go with the flow um, on a week to week, day to day basis, so. And our next question is, um, what time in your law school career did you find was best to get involved with extracurricular organizations? And um, is there a point that where, you know, how soon is too soon? Um, or is it whenever you feel ready? Um, as president of one of the student organizations, um, you know, we, we do keep first years and second years and third years and all their different schedules in mind. Um, so, for example, we do have um, a leadership position for first years, um, but they're not fully involved in planning events. They don't have um, too many responsibilities. So, and I think many other organizations take that into account. As a first year, you're not going to have too many, um, too much work planning rigorously for all these events. Your main job as a first year, if you do want to get involved, would, would be relatively simple, like advertising events to your other classmates. Um, so students can get involved in their first year, um, but I guess in my experience, I didn't get fully involved until my second year. And at that time, I felt that I knew well enough what was going on um, that I could take on this new responsibility. Else? So I uh, I also like Zach. Well, first of all, when you guys come to Chicago today, about the third week of school, we have an organization fair. So that's where all of the student organizations are on the second and third floor. And you can see exactly what we have to offer in terms of different organization groups and interest groups. So that is a great time to go and see just what's available and sign up to be a part of the email list. When you're on an email list, that's all you do is just get emails and you can put it on your resume saying you're a part of that group and you can attend their events and just kind of find out the information they are giving out to the student body. It's very low commitment. Then your next option is to become a 1L representative. So if there's an organization you're really interested in, you can become a 1L representative. Definitely can put that on your resume. And again, the responsibilities for 1Ls will be maybe to attend a few events, but then just to advertise, like Zach said, the events for um, for that organization. The true involvement comes your second and third year. Uh, I know for trial team, tryouts don't happen until the spring. So your first year of law school, you don't even have to worry about uh, trial team. Uh, you can try out in the spring, and even if you don't make it through tryouts in the spring, there are other opportunities during your 2L and 3L year to potentially make the team. Law review, again, doesn't happen until after your first year of school and after grades come out. Uh, you can either grade onto law review or you can write onto law review. So that's something that you deal with between your 1L and 2L summer. So that's another thing you don't have to worry about your first year. Uh, that first year, I think the big balance comes in how many events you attend and how many you decide not to attend. Because what's so great 
about Chicago Kent and what we've been talking about is because we have such a wonderful community and so many passionate students, we have so many different events of all kinds. There are fun events there. Well, they're all fun, but there's just like the purely social events. There's the mentorship events. There are the educational events. Uh, there are networking events. So there's a lot of different things to choose from. I think my 1L year, I definitely, because I was really concerned about just making sure I was adjusting to law school and putting all the effort I could into classes, I didn't attend as many of a, as many events uh, my first semester. My second semester, I started to attend a little bit more because I had the, a hold of things. And then 2L year, I just attended as many as I could because you get 2L years really where you start to do a lot more than you think you're gonna do uh, because you start to feel super involved in school. You are now really involved in organizations and now you're like, well, I wanna attend all the events because I know exactly which ones are the best ones or I know this is a new opportunity. So for me, I took a little bit of a ramp up approach, but I definitely think, again, like Anisha said, you know you best. So uh, do what you, I would recommend doing what you need to do that first semester of law school, take some time to adjust and then start to add more things in. But if you are a very social person and you know that you need to be meeting people, you need to be involved, to feel like you have a sense of community right off the bat, to be able to focus on your studies at other points, then that's something you gotta do too. Cause I know a lot of people took that approach as well. Yeah, so I'm, I'm that very social person that took that approach. <laughs> Um, my my one o years, as I mentioned, I was uh, I was working at Career Services, um, and I think I joined uh, as a one l rep. Uh, I was a one l rep for the Student Bar Association. Uh, I was also a one l rep for the Hispanic Latino Law Student Association and the Student Humanitarian Network, uh, both which I'm currently president of now. Uh, funny how that worked out. But um, uh, I think I also joined the Student Alumni Board as a one l. Um, one one of the things that really uh, that I found useful in in making these decisions again is knowing that I like being busy. I like meeting new people, um, and I think that that aspect of liking to meet new people and knowing that that's an important aspect of my life uh, really pushed me to decide to get as involved as I did my one out year, um, which ended up working out for the best in in my case uh, because all of these incredible events that uh, Claire talks about. I, I had the chance to go to these events um, with two L's and three L's that were already perfectly fine and perfectly stable and knew exactly what they wanted to do. So it was just nice to be able to uh, be taken uh, to these incredible events as a one L. Um, it, it, it felt uh, like I was being supported a little by, my, by the upperclassmen. And that was really uh, a product of being involved uh, because I was able to sit in on board meetings and whatnot. Now, that's not to say that you won't have these opportunities if you're not on the board. Uh, one of the things that I know that uh, the Student Humanitarian Network and the uh, Hispanic Latino Law Student Association do is that we, anytime that there are any networking events available, we will encourage people to get together as a group. And if we know that a member of the board is going, we will reach out to the membership and tell them, hey, this person is leaving the school at this time. They're meeting in the lobby if you want to go with them to this event so that you don't have to go and show up to this might what might be somewhat uh, you know scary event you won't have to show up by yourself um so yeah i mean definitely know what what works best for you that's uh that's something that i would encourage and definitely sign up for all of those membership lists because there's some incredible events that you can uh you can go to as well yeah i'm not going to say anything much more other than as Claire mentioned in the I don't know exactly when it is but they have tables with everything from trial team to societies you've probably never even heard of and that's what happened with me when I went I signed up for everything all the they really just put you on an email list and keep you up to date with different events and different things um, there's I still get emails from events that I send for four years ago that I've never attended one meeting for um, but it's just being in the know of what's going on and as you're interests may change or you might find other interests in law school it's great to kind of have those um, on the back burner because you know you may sign up for criminal law and have no intentions of diving into that but it may be a guest speaker that just happens to be you know coming to their event one day um, so 
I think signing up for everything that you're interested in is a great idea um, because you'll be in the know on that list server for forever until you decide to get off of it. Um, and then the other thing I would say, just as an evening student, um, but as a person who's very social and before law school, I was very involved just in the community. Um, and I kind of didn't lose sight of it, but I just didn't have the opportunities in front of me with the time restraints. Um, I would encourage you to be social the first year, you know? Um, and when I say that, I mean, there's Convisor, which is like, I don't know how to describe that. That's just kind of, I don't know. One of the professors, Claire can explain it better. It's just fun. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sponsored event by the SBA and one of our professor Convisor who uh, started Barbary Bar Prep. So that's uh, that's another thing that you can get involved in right away is there's Barbary and Themis and they always have student reps. And if you are um, thinking about the bar, right away, if you become a student rep, I think they actually help pay for yeah. your bar. Uh, so that's another option. But they, the SBA, which is our Student Bar Association, student government, throws it together with a uh, professor convisor, and it's at uh, Hubbard Inn in uh, River North. And it's just like, it's just a super fun night out where it's like $5 wristbands, and then you're just there for a few hours with everybody in school, and it's once a semester, and that's like one of the more like social, just purely social events, but it's very fun. Yeah, so I would I would say things like that, um, and not necessarily to just go out and find a place to, you know, have free drinks with the rest, but I, I mean that to say, be social in regards to um, take the time to network, even if you're not part of an organization, it doesn't mean you're still not making those connections. It doesn't mean you can't um, still, you know, have your name known, however, you know, whatever your goal is in law school. Um, so when I say be social, I mean, try and get to the events, um, stay on the those, those uh, email lists, and that way you can kind of, um, kind of approach things on your own time versus being involved in an organization your first year, that's overwhelming. And I think we can all agree that your first year is the hardest, especially with the papers that you're required to do. Um, there's just things that across the board, even beyond Chicago Cat, that first year students, they just go through. Like your first year paper, your memo, those are things that every college, every law school student goes through that, you know, I, I think we can all agree, we don't wanna be having to worry about anything else while writing our memo our first year, and I'm sure you won't either. So just take advantage of what's there, stay in the know, and go to the things that you can go to, especially as an evening student. Yeah, the next question is about um, your employment prospects, and um, can you talk about a little bit about sort of what those look like and how the school helps you stay competitive in a job market, in a, particularly in a city with so many law schools. Yeah, so uh, I will be joining a firm called Skadden Arps in September, and I got that job through uh, Chicago Kent's OCI and fall recruiting process, which happened, and OCI is on-campus interviews. Uh, that happens after your one year, one L year summer. And so you uh, kind of get matched with a bunch of firms. You do like 20 minute interviews and then you go on longer interviews uh, for second rounds at the firms. And then eventually you potentially get an offer for a summer associate position for your 2L summer. So after you finish your 2L year. So you're kind of, if you go through that process, you do that a year ahead to get your 2L uh, summer associate chip. And then after the end of that, the law firm potentially offers you a job for after you graduate. So if that, if you want to work at a large law firm in the city, that is um, definitely doing OCI and fall recruiting after your 1L year summer is a great way to do that. Uh, even if you don't do that, there's other plenty of opportunities to get involved in a big law firm or a mid-sized law firm. And the school has something, our career services have something called Simplicity, which is kind of like an internal job posting network. So they'll continually post jobs, not just for law firms, but also government jobs and public agencies that you might want to work for, nonprofits, legal aids, all those get posted on there. So you can kind of keep up to date about different uh, job postings. And as far as what Chicago Kent does in preparing you uh, to be competitive for the market, 
Well, a lot of being competitive in the market, I think, is setting yourself apart in the activities that you do, whether that is volunteering, being a part of different organizations, uh, maybe it's research with a professor. There are a lot of things that Chicago Kent offers that can set, that gives you different experiences that can set you apart when you're in an interview and gives you something that can ignite your passion that you can talk to and explain to an employer what you're interested in and then they can get to know you a little bit better. Apart from that, our career services offices are amazing. So if you are interested in something, you talk to your career counselor, they can set you up with different um, uh, ideas of where you should be looking at, who you should be talking to, but also review their your resume, their re they'll review your cover letter, and there's multiple points in your first year of law school where there are mandatory resume turn-ins where they teach you how to create a legal resume because it's a lot different than a normal resume. And then they give you suggestions on how to build that resume. So there are a lot of opportunities through the Career Services uh, Center, which actually, I'm sorry I spoke so much about because I know Gabe knows a lot more because he worked there, um, but just as someone who's received their services, they definitely help set you apart and help set you up for a good job. Yeah, to, to jump off that, I mean, you did a great job explaining everything, Claire. Um, I think the, the only thing I would add on is that there is um, the, each career services counselor, we have a number of them. Um, mm -hmm. Each one has a, has a specific practice that they, or not practice, but a field of law that they focus on. Uh, so, for example, everyone that wants to do public interest will speak with Michelle Vodnik because she spent the last, over the, the last 15 years building connections and uh, connections with people around the country, really. Uh, so if you're someone that wants to work in public interest, that's who you would be paired with because that is the person most equipped to help you because she has been building these connections for the past 15 years. Um, so that the way that career services approaches being able to help with career prospects is very pragmatic and uh, fairly effective. Uh, so I next year, I will be working for a large firm as well. Uh, that focuses on representing financial institutions. Um, I'll be working here in their Chicago office. And the way that I came uh, about this firm um, was was a little bit not uh, not as straightforward as uh, as OCI was. Um, initially, the firm uh, wasn't interviewing students uh, through OCI at Chicago Kent, uh, so I had to take a separate approach. Um, it was my top choice firm uh, for my two uh, summer associateship. And what I had to do was network to be able to get a foot through the door because the firm was really not interviewing that, ma that many students. Um, so I was networking with like the outside networks that I had built after working uh, in the field for a couple of years. And then uh, I reached out to career services and they said, we have an alum there. Uh, and they facilitated an introduction with an alum uh, who also happened to be, or was happening to be going into her new role as uh, being head of the hiring committee. So that just happened to work really, really well uh, that we had an alum that had just moved to the firm a couple of years before. Um, but career services facilitated that initial introduction. Um, and then uh, when interviewing for their summer position, uh, I went through the Cook County Bar Association's uh, diversity fair, uh, which is hosted at the, uh, at the end of your 1L summer. So, after you finish your 1L year, uh, you will go through your 1L summer. And uh, I think this fair was hosted around August or uh, late July. Um, so it was the same process as OCI. Uh, you had 20 minute intervals or interviews uh, that were either followed or not followed up by with callback interviews, which were more in-depth and more extensive interviews with more people. Um, I ended up uh, working there my second year summer. Uh, and after the summer, I, uh, I accepted an a full-time offer for full-time employment next year. Uh, so that's where I'll be going uh, next year after graduation. Um, and it was all through that introduction uh, that I had through career services. So they help a lot. <laughs> Another really good point, too, is that even after you graduate, I know um, the fall is actually a really busy time for our career service, our career counselors, because not only are they getting ready to help all the 1Ls with their resumes, but they are contacting all the recent graduates who graduated in the spring to make sure that they um, have job placement. So even if you don't get an opportunity where you get to have a job offer before you graduate, because there's just a lot of more firms and organizations and government agencies that don't even offer you a job until after you've taken and passed the bar and been admitted into the bar association. Uh, mm -hmm. 
career services stays in contact with in contact with you and is able to help you. And even five years down the line, I've heard of alumni coming back and being like, okay, I want to make a career change and they're still available. So it's a really great resource while you're in school and even after. And we've had a few questions that have come in about the public interest certificate. So Anisha, could you talk a little bit more about that certificate and um, sort of what the benefits are. And, and I know, Claire, you're involved with the Kent Justice Foundation, so maybe you could also explain what that is and how that supports students who are interested in public interest. Okay, so um, th there's a bunch of different certificates. Uh, I got involved in public interest just for several reasons, because it kind of is a broader um, certificate that encompasses a lot of different things that um, I'm interested in. Um, anything with the word public really kind of um, attracts me um, to, to the service and community, anything in regards to that. Um, but in regards to the public interest certificate and all the certificates, you can go on CAT, um, search the certificate, and it will tell you the classes you have to take, uh, the requirements, and just any steps you really need to um, earn their certificate. Um, the people who typically run their certificate programs are professors. I know many of them are. Um, Professor Shapiro is um, is a lead in the public interest program. Um, I know Dean uh, Ross Jackson helps with the employment and labor certificate. Um, Professor Kling, who's been at Kent uh, forever and teaches quite a few classes. Um, and uh, I forgot my, real, my estate professor's name, but he he does the bankruptcy. But point being, there's a lot of professors that, that lead these certificate programs, which I wanted to make a point of adding because um, they're really understanding of what it what it means to achieve that certificate. They're really understanding of, um, of uh, or they're really aware of the fact that they need to like sit down with you and have conversations with you to make sure that it's the right field. For example, for, with this whole pandemic, um, the last requirement I have to fulfill for the certificate is um, public interest uh, community service hours. Um, of course, with everything that's going on, I'm limited, and I, you know, email Professor Shapiro, and you know, having been in her class and being able to communicate her with so openly, um, she's like, you know, of course, I don't expect you to do these things, but you know, let's talk. And I say that to say that. Um, the public interest, not only the public interest certificate, but all the certificates are really great programs, um, even more so because it's professors, people who are really understanding of your time, the requirements, and um, simply the fact that it's in addition to the classes you're already taking, to be quite honest. Um, so yeah, I, specifically in regards to public interest, any requirements you can see online. Um, I think it's one of the easiest certificates to achieve because a lot of the classes that are accepted as a requirement are classes you're already taking, um, which I would definitely look at for all the certificates, because sometimes you can be achieving a certificate and not even really knowing it unless you really pay attention to the classes that you're taking. So, The Kent Justice Foundation is a wonderful student organization that are students supporting public interest students. So what our goal is, is to raise money throughout the year through certain events. We have a wine night in the fall, and then in the spring we do an auction, which is super fun, and we raise money to be able to allow public interest students to apply for a scholarship. And then we're able to give out, um, depending on how much money we raise, how many students apply, uh, multiple $2,000 to $5,000 scholarships for people who are looking to work in the public interest field over their summers. But a lot of public interest jobs, like if, even if you want to work at the state's attorney's office or if you're working for a legal aid, a lot of times they're internships and you don't and they don't pay. So it's really hard to try to support yourself. So that's why there's Kent Justice Foundation as an opportunity for students to apply, get a scholarship and be able to actually take the job that they want without having worried about being worried about how they're gonna pay rent. And that's not the only opportunity for students if they're looking in the public interest field to get funding. There's also work study. A lot of times over the summer, work study can apply towards your legal, uh, your uh, public interest job. And there's also a separate um, scholarship called the Justice John Paul Stevens Scholarship. And I believe that's about $8,000. And there's multiple different organizations throughout um, the city in general that are looking to sponsor people, especially who are 
uh, to support them while they're looking for public interest jobs. So, oh, just a little plug for the Chicago Kent auction. What's really cool about it, if you decide to come, it's been my favorite event. Uh, alumni donate experiences that you can bid on in a silent auction and then we usually have a live auction where we have professors that donate experiences with them so you can go rock climbing with your con law professor you can go over to dinner at your contracts professor's house or you can go bowling with your property professor all things I have done because they are super fun experiences you can get cocktails with your biz orgs professor all these different things and what you can do is they'll take like five people. So the price will be high, but you split it over five people. So it's very manageable. And then all of those funds goes directly to support public interest students and their scholarships over the. Great, thanks. So we have actually reached the end of the uh, time for the webinar. It's gone by very fast. Um, so I wanna thank everyone for joining us today. I, there were questions that we did not get to, um, but the admissions staff will follow up on all of those questions in the coming week. And I do wanna make sure everyone knows we do have a number of uh, programs coming up this week. We're running webinars almost every day in the com coming week and touching on some of the topics that came up in today's presentation as well. So um, definitely go to the Admitted Students website to see those upcoming uh, presentations. You should have also all received an email yesterday with links to register for those. Um, and again, if you have any questions, please reach out to the Office of Admissions. We are always happy to put you in touch with students, faculty, and alumni. Um, I want to thank all of our panelists today. It was great to hear about your experiences, and I appreciate everyone joining us for the webinar, and I hope everyone uh, has an enjoyable day, and we look forward to speaking with you further. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Congrats.